you had a very busy week last week from going out to the volleyball day in Nebraska. Then you bounced. You you went up to Minnesota, right? Yes. Then you bounced right up to Minnesota next day and Mm -hmm. obviously had uh, a lot going on there. So between those events, kind of what was your – what was a moment that kind of – stood out for you i assume it's going to be from volleyball day because that went a little better than the minnesota game did if we're being (laughs) honest um but what's something that just kind of you keep replaying in your mind that really stuck out from covering those events um you know it's funny you say that because i had a moment after the entire day ended at volleyball day and i was standing on the stage or i guess it would have been the court and um I just kind of looked around and I was just kind of like spun in a little circle. Me and Anna were sitting there and people were singing to Scotty McCreary and the lights were going on. I could see all the faces. And I think I just had one of those moments like, holy cow, like this just happened. And I think for me to be standing on that court as they were kind of like just letting it be while the concert was happening, I was like, history just happened here. It was just, I don't think it was one of those things that many people processed in the moment, but was just kind of like in awe that it happened. Um, so I think that was, it's kind of crazy you asked that because I don't think it really sunk in until after the fact. And even to this day, like, I don't think it's going to be one of those things until I have like a credential to show my kids one day. But, um, second moment would for sure be the tunnel walk. So the way they Mm, did that was so well executed and and I already knew it was happening and I still was, um, just like blown away. I, if if anyone saw me, they would probably thought I was a crazy person. I had two phones. I had my work phone. I had my actual (laughs) phone. And I, I was, one phone was on the screen, the other phone was on the tunnel. So um, I couldn't get enough of it. I, I've watched it a million times over. I just watching those girls' faces, seeing Coach Cook. Like, I just can't truly really imagine what it's like to like, have those gates open and you see that many people. I just, I think it was just so well executed. Yeah, it just, it truly was everything that I think it was chalked up to be. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of a unique uh convergence of events right obviously people in nebraska especially omaha and lincoln really get up for big events in the first place people in nebraska in are it's a huge volleyball state and then you are hosting it at this iconic venue that means so much to so many people there was a lot going on there and then you add into the fact that okay there's probably nowhere else in the world you're getting ninety two thousand people to watch volleyball there's probably, you know, nowhere else in the world where a lot of these things happened at once. As you have let this set in for the last, I guess it's a week ago now, it's, in, you know, it's already I know, uh, I know. seven days gone by. What are some of the things that have settled in for you? I mean, I it was a world record, too. We kind of just glossed over yeah. that part of it. Um, yeah. just that just that small tiny detail right yeah no big deal just the <laughs> most people that have ever watched a women's sporting events in the history mm-hmm. of ever um yeah. what has there been something that you know after the fact as you're either going through some of the clips on your phone or looking at some of the facts and figures of of the of the actuality of what happened that it is really started to sink into is you know hey maybe this is a way bigger deal than i realized yeah you know, it's crazy because growing up in the Husker fan culture, I feel like we always think that people are talking about Nebraska. <laughs> right. Um, and I think maybe that's just us living in our little bubble in the Midwest. <laughs> but <laughs> I think it was crazy to truly, truly see that. Um, like when I was done with the event, the only thing that was on social media, on every single platform, there was nothing else happening in the sports world. Like mm-hmm. every single scroll was this. And then beyond that, it wasn't just that day. It was the following, like the following days and seeing how many uh, sports anchors and shows and news anchors that were talking about it. And then beyond that, seeing athletes like Alex Morgan quote tweeting it. So just all of these huge eyes that were on this event and they've played on the biggest stages, right? Like Alex Morgan's played in the Olympics and the World Cup and all of these things. She's one at the highest level and this is catching her attention and she knows the gravity of this. And so I think realizing that we happen to be at the event that all these people are talking about and seeing it with our own eyes. They got to watch it on the screen. I think that's been the part for me personally that I'm like, holy cow, like you truly understand the power of this. Mm-hmm. Um, but then to really see, I think the gravity of just icons in the sports world. I mean, 
um, just the people that were there even like Carrie Walsh Jennings was there. Like, how cool is that? Like she was front row. Just, I just think that's just awesome. Like people were really, truly recognizing that this wasn't just like this, you know, we're going to try and strive for this record. Like, no, this is much bigger than this. And I do have a ton of pictures um, and videos of little girls in the front row and walking into the games with their families. And so I think that is like the biggest second impact for me is seeing that firsthand with my eyes, how many little girls were having the time of their life and getting to talk to players afterwards. They were like, we just set like a standard for all these little girls that this isn't impossible. Like they can actually do this. So the messaging behind all of it just truly made it even better than what it was expected to be. Yeah. Well, I know you, you mentioned, and a lot of this got kind of lost because the next day Nebraska football was opening their season. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But, you know, you heard uh, Coach Cook get emotional talking about, hey, oh, gosh, you yeah. know, the the impossible is possible. And, and mm-hmm. I think I heard you kind of tell a story. It might have been with us or it might have been on, on one of the Herdat Sports social media platforms talking about, hey, you know, you grow up kind of a, a Nebraska football fan and you're like, oh, well, I'm never going to get to go through the tunnel walk. And now yeah. girls or, or anybody that, that grows up a Husker fan is like, oh, well, maybe I can. How much Mm -hmm. did that kind of factor into how emotional some people got in your mind to this whole thing? Oh Oh my gosh. Like we went to the rally that morning and coach cook was, had just started speaking. And before he started talking, like everyone started cheering and he tried to kind of get some words out about like what this event truly means and like what it meant to finally get it to happen. And he couldn't speak. Like he had to stop multiple times and, the crowd had to cheer him through it. His team had to cheer him through it. And he read a a card. I think it was written from one of his former teammates about just like how special this was. He couldn't get through that either. So, I mean, just from the very beginning of the day, it was just an emotional day and they had little girls write notes to the team and they had a few of them read them to the girls specifically, like in front of the rally. And one girl, she lost it. She got to meet Becca Alec and she couldn't keep it together. And this girl was no older than eight years old. So I think we're understanding how big of an impact this is when girls that young are understanding how important this is. But I think to your point, you're so right because we've only ever seen one team exit that tunnel mm-hmm. and to see another team do it. And obviously this is, you know, a crazy situation. This is not how all games are played. And this is still Nebraska football's tunnel. That's how they enter every game. But I think it's at least the idea that certain circumstances have been pushed and there will be things now created for women's sports to make these venues and these games just as special and as important as they should be celebrated. And so I think that gives these little girls an idea that, okay, maybe it might not be the tunnel walk, but maybe it might be X, Y, and Z, right? Somewhere else. And so I think by Nebraska pushing the boundary a little bit, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't start seeing some other things in other sports, trying at least, to do similar because I think it's not always that maybe you know when you think of attendance I'm just going to use soccer because that's just what I'm used to Mm -hmm. there might be some teams out there that have really great attendance records and they have a really faithful loyal fan base and they do a great job but it's because they're usually in the confines of you know their stadium right so and that's I guess similar for Nebraska volleyball they're always in Devaney but what if now we take it one step further and just try to go to a different venue and see how many fans there really are that continue to show up? I think that kind of thing, every once in a while, just breaking that boundary, the physical boundary, I think will be really good for girls sports. And uh, I think we obviously saw that, what testing it looks like. And maybe we, maybe sometimes we do limit ourselves thinking, well, maybe people won't show up. We're just used to this many numbers. But I think when you try, you know, look what's happened. Yeah, I mean, not to get too philosophical on you here, but, you know, the 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 tunnel walk is, is kind of a, you know, it's a symbol for all the things that we thought were unattainable. Right. And 100%. it's whether it's for women or, or, or anyone, really, you know, a lot of mm-hmm. times we put uh, limits on ourselves because putting yourself out there can be scary. Right. Like going right. out there and saying, hey, we want to sell. 90,000 tickets to a volleyball match, right? right? That almost quintuples the standing record, right? Like in the in terms of a college volleyball match, to put that yeah. out there in the first place is kind of a scary thing, but oh, yeah. it's one of those things where if you don't put yourself out there and say, "Hey, this is what I want," 
then you can't achieve it. And and that's maybe as important of a lesson from this as anything is, is you have to go for the things you want. You know, the thing that I think is really cool too, and I know it doesn't count necessarily because the first game was an exhibition, but Anna and I were talking about this after the fact that technically, if we're looking at attendance records, Wayne State and Kearney would hold the second one because of the attendance that did show up in that football That's stadium awesome. for their game. And yeah. then the overflow that was coming for the next game, but they were still there. Everyone was cheering. And so I was like, it's kind of cool to see the family a little bit, right? Like it's all in the state of Nebraska. And I don't know, maybe not everyone would count it, but I think the state of Nebraska would like to count that. And I think it's pretty cool that that school got that exposure and recognition that those schools deserve as well.